Okay, so we're, we're going into the Q&A section. Uh, Mark actually had a question. He's been pinging me privately. We have a ton of questions. Let me go to Mark Sokol first. Mark wanted to know about practical applications. Sir? Um, yes, yeah, so very simply, uh, John, is there any practical experiment that we can try here in the lab uh, to use your theory, uh, prove it one way or another? Uh, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. <coughs> Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, okay, good. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we can. So uh, there are two kinds of experiments. The first ones I showed you before in the, in the, in the beginning of my presentation, which uh, would uh, confront some what I call flaws of physics, at least for the magnets and, uh, uh, you know, the, the particle uh, uh, smashing into the wall. Uh, for the others, I didn't present them because it's a bit more tricky and longer, but uh, uh, you know, I have, uh, uh, as I said in the, in the end, I have a protocol of communications quicker than the speed of light potentially uh, based on uh, uh, entangled particles. Uh, but it, it involves some uh, not theory uh, and uh, uh, this is why I didn't present it because this is a full presentation in itself. Uh, uh, but this is one thing. Another one uh, with another model, which is not based on not theory, but which is based on um, finite projective geometry. Um, I presented it in in um, in 2014 uh, San Francisco uh, at a, 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 a conference of cryptography. The idea is, in the model I propose, because this is a model, this is not really a theory, but it works like because of what I said to, to, to today. Uh, if you take, say, four entangled photons, uh, and uh, uh, one with a small delay, uh, so entangled, all entangled, uh, my forecast is that when the four ent entangled photons will reach to be in, in the same plan, in the same plane, plane, in the same plane, then they will intrinsically uh, be uh, uh, no more entangled. Uh, there will be decurrence. For example, you, you have four uh, photons. Uh, you know that the, the, the the time during which they are expected to be entangled is, uh, say, uh, one minute. Uh, if, if you put them in the same plane uh, geometrically uh, after two seconds, uh, they will stop being entangled uh, as soon as. And this has implication in, uh, for making a uh, analog quantum computer, which uh, with the power of NP-complete cal calculations. I showed this, I, I presented this in, uh, I told you, 2014 in San Francisco. Okay, but well, we're more concentrated on the propulsion side, the propulsion engineering. What, what are the propulsion engineering implications of this theory? Uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, frankly speaking, for propulsion, I, I don't know. I, uh, just, just the fact that, you know, there are two points. The, the first is propulsion by itself. Uh, I, I don't really know because if, even if you have, as I said, anti-gravity, you need to be to use it uh, next to a gravity source. So, which is, um, which is not the problem. Basically, if you want to go from the Earth to uh, Proxima Centaurus, most of your trip is in vacuum and is uh, very far away from any mass. So for me, this is not the right way. The right way is to be able to, to, to be propelled in vacuum not necessarily with big accelerations, but for a long time. And you will go very quick. Look, if, if you want to go from uh, the Earth to Alpha Centaurus in 18 years, say, the accelerate, permanent acceleration you need is 0 0.03 Gs permanent. So very, very small. And you, and you will pass by at C over 2, which is huge. Uh, but you, you need to accelerate constantly in the vacuum. So uh, I have, I, but I, I didn't speak about it, but I have, and I'm going to patent it uh, in, during, normally it should happen, occur during 2021, a, an engine, uh, what I call infinite impulse propulsion engine, which can uh, create such 
a um, an acceleration and which is based on traditional physics uh, you know uh, more than traditional uh, high school physics i would say and we need to test it so i, I i'm working with a friend which is uh, 400 kilometers away from my home and uh, we are going to carry out an experiment and if it works uh, what we expect uh, then we will patent it and uh, it will be the first such kind of uh, engine uh, because you know there was the EM drive for example and so on. Uh, personally, I don't think it works, but uh, you know, <laughs> not everybody agrees on this. I I, I know Martin Taima uh, uh, in uh, Dresden University who tested it and found some uh, tricky things about this. Uh, but uh, he thinks he told me at at least uh, it was uh, four years ago that he didn't believe it it's working. So, and uh, if even if it was working, it would be milli newtons, and what I'm proposing are newtons of 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 thrust. Okay, so completely different. If it works, uh, if Tim agrees, uh, and once the patent is applied for, I, I will uh, I, I will give you a, a talk on this. Uh, if it works, once again, uh, I I'm not sure it should, but uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much for that. W wonderful. Okay, um, so let me go to Dennis Bushnell next. And sorry, okay, uh, Dennis, uh, let me see. I'm going to ask you to unmute, sir, and go ahead. I have a very simple question. Uh, what is the physics of the measured greater than 10,000 times light speed for quantum entanglement? So if I understood well, you are referring to Gisin's experiment in 2008? Yeah. Yes, OK. Uh, there have so, been measurements of, of, of a quantum entanglement, good yes. measurement. And to the extent it can be measured, its speed is greater, yes, 10, greater times. than 10,000 times light speed. Yes. What? Physics could produce this, and it's very robust. Yes, yes, sure. Uh, I fully agree with this. Just imagine in, in my model that two entangled particles would be entangled because they would be, they would be physically linked together with an infinitesimal, uh, infinitesimally thin, thin uh, uh, tie link. Okay, then if the measurement breaks this thin say, wire. As soon as it's broken, you have instantaneous change uh, of your system. Okay, and with no no contradiction about the speed of light and re relativity, even with this. This, this is uh, this is what can be. Uh, uh, the one of the consequences, one of the models which allows the, the non Achimedean geometry, which I, I told you about tonight. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, um, now let me see. I believe uh, Ziggy had some questions. Uh, Ziggy, where are you at, sir? Uh, let me unmute Ziggy. Oh, okay. Um, Ziggy, I'm, I'm going to have to mute you back out. You, you were break. You're breaking up really bad. Okay, I, I'm sorry about that, Jean Francois. Uh, let me see. And I'm not sure why D Dennis is still. Maybe he's spotlighted. Sorry. Um, okay. Nope. Okay, I'm not sure why it's showing him. And Jean-Francois, can you still hear me okay, sir? Yes, 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 uh, very good. Oh, okay, wonderful, wonderful. Sorry, I was just having some some weird. Uh, let me go to Mark Fiorentino. Uh, Mark, are you with us, sir? Yeah, hello. And, and can you start your camera, Mark? Yeah, wonderful, thank are. you. Hello? Yeah. 
I didn't. I didn't think I really had a question. I just had some comments that I was making. I was, oh, okay. I well, guess, in general, I, I, I would. I missed the beginning of your uh, lecture, so I kind of missed the whole uh, introduction. Maybe uh, you could just briefly say, in a sentence or two, you know, how what is the basis or the idea or the concept of your of your theory? Okay. So the first of all, I, as I said in, in the beginning, the, there are what I consider as flaws or uh, uh, mistakes in physics, which is not globally uh, consistent, coherent. There are contradictions. It's it's coherent by parts, as I said, but it's not completely coherent. So my way to tackle physics is to make something a kind of a huge building which would be completely coherent. And as I said before, I, I have physicists against me, a, a Russian friend of mine and a French friend of mine, who say that this is not the right way to, to, to tackle physics. But I, I believe that we need to find, you know, the world is supposed to be globally coherent. So we need to find this kind of secret. This is, this is my, my so, point. Then, so you yeah. believe, you basically have a, a, a different interpretation. You think they've misinterpreted certain things like special relativity and things of that nature? Exactly. I think that, the, you know, the, there is this problem of non-causality in quantum physics, which I don't like at all, because uh, as I said in the beginning, I am an, also an engineer, a mathematician, but also an engineer. For me, you know, if, uh, for example, I've been working in Airbus, so if, if there is a crash of a plane, and uh, as a quantum physicist, I come back to my boss and say, oh, yes, we didn't have uh, tough luck today, you know. <laughs> To 300 people died, but uh, tough luck. Uh, sorry for this. Uh, he will fire me and he will be right. I am an engineer. I need to find a, 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 a reason why. If I don't find a reason why, I will say, there is, I didn't find a cause, but there is a cause, but I, I, I was not able to find it. But saying that there is no cause for me is completely crazy. Uh, and so, uh, and what I proved in the beginning is that, for example, Maxwell was the first to introduce non-causality because the wave equation, for example, uh, you know, is obtained through canceling the charges. But if you cancel the charge, you cancel the cause. And why waves? Why waves if you don't have, if you have canceled the cause? Why a field, in fact? There is no reason why. So I, I said that it does work perfectly well statistically, etc. But, uh, you know, uh, the field, uh, with the wave equation for me seems to be something which is quite uh, strange. And also you have this uh, problem in quantum physics, for example, for fundamental particles like the electron. Uh, it has a charge, but it has no radius. It has no nothing. It has a mass, which is strange, but no volume. Uh, and so... Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the point is that in my model, it looks like a point viewed from our scale, but you know, at the sub infinitesimal scale, there is a volume, there is something in it. We don't know what it is, but there is something. And it, knowing that there is something changes the point of view we can have. And of course, uh, as I said also, uh, you know, quantum physics doesn't uh, respect Kolmogorov, uh, the, uh, the Kolmogorov actions of probability. Uh, and you know, this is the, the very big dispute about uh, hidden variables. Mm. And uh, I didn't speak about this, but uh, uh, you know, if you are in a, a non-Archimedean space, uh, you can have hidden variables which are in no uh, Hilbert space, but elsewhere. But if you are looking like quantum physicists today only to Hilbert spaces, you will never find them. It doesn't mean they don't exist. Basically, yeah. Very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, Mark, thank you. So next I have, let me see. So Ziggy and Jeremiah actually both have questions and they are both struggling with some bandwidth issues. I guess we, we have poor, poor weather across the country, so to speak. Um, so I, I will ask for them. Uh, let me see. So Z what Ziggy was wondering was he missed the condition that preserves causality in quantum physics. I guess that was the, he just restated that. So I'm wondering, could you talk about causality in your model? Yes, in my model, you know, you, we, what happens at our screen ultimately comes from the 
infinitesimal scale. What I didn't say in my talk is that you have the infinitesimal scale, but you have an infinitesimal scale of the infinitesimal scale and so on. And this is why I said in my presentation that you, you will find a cause, but this will not be the ultimate word cause. It, it's an infinite descent, in fact, to, okay, so we will never end, but at least there is a cause to any event, which is not the case at all in uh, quantum physics today, officially. And what I said uh, just before uh, answering the, 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 the previous question is that even today in uh, uh, orthodox and classical physics, uh, Maxwell, uh, Maxwell physics, when Maxwell cancels the, the cause, that is the, the charges, uh, it doesn't seem correct for to me at least. Thank you. Um, and then I actually had one more question. I split these up. And again, this was Ziggy and Jeremiah to both ask this. But so now your model, when you're describing an anti-gravity force or the potential for an anti-gravity force, as well as gravity shielding, right? It, it sounds like those, basically, it sounds like you're opening the door back up to multiple approaches. Yes, uh, oh. you, exactly. Yeah, there is... Uh, I made the difference between anti-gravity, which is you are going to play with the different symmetries and create a dissymmetry which will play like anti-gravity uh, next to a, a mass. And then you have the, the problem of gravity shielding with if you have this ether uh, with infinite speed uh, and uh, with isotropic speed, more or less homogeneous, in fact. Uh, and then if you can shield it, uh, I don't know how to do this, but if you can shield it, uh, you will have a force out of out of vacuum. Uh, okay, so uh, and you would depropel like this. Now, how how to 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 make the the shield is uh, is another story. <laughs> oh. Wonderful. Th thank you. Uh, sorry, and, and I should apologize. We we actually have a packed house. We have 40 participants in today's session and, and everyone is talking in chat. So I'm trying to run through here. Um, let me see. I believe Ron Keita had a question. Uh, Ron, are you with us, sir? I will, am, I, am I unmuted? You, you are now. Okay. Yeah, Jean-Francois. Bon, bon <laughs> and the question is, it's not so much a question, it's as a dogging problem. I deal with benzene rings and benzene electron ring currents. And the thing is, with benzene, the benzene molecule is extremely planar. It's, it is flat, as you can imagine, due to its nature. When you go up the benzene ring from benzene to naphthalene, you are still planar and you, as you keep going up, what happens is whenever you crystallize, basically, uh, I'll use the word uh, pure benzene series, uh, what happens is you go into a monoclinic structure. So you have uh, a very, very symmetric structure, which is benzene is the best example. You join two together and there is some, I don't, I don't, I won't use the word space, but when you, when you join the two benzene rings together to form naphthalene, that naphthalene becomes monoclinic. Monoclinic, as you know, is one side or angle shortened. So you have an asymmetry, asymmetry uh, in the monoclinic crystal arising out of something that is symmetric. And I was wondering your thoughts, uh, where I, I, I've been looking for an answer. Uh, I don't think it's space time. Because the degree of when you when you sublime, uh, I, I if you sublime paradise chlorobenzene common mothballs, you will see an, a beautiful monoclinic structure. Uh, the degree of the the, the, the angle and bent uh, is is not it's, it's it's orders of magnitude beyond space time. But I was wondering where do you see things arising out of completely symmetric systems? that lead to completely asymmetric systems that lead to modification of forces? Uh, uh, 
you know, the, the, the benzene molecule uh, is, uh, is very symmetric. And when you assemble two, if I understand what you said, two uh, uh, such benzene molecules, you get something which looks like not being symmetric. This is it? Yes, yes, it's, it's monoclinic. It's a monoclinic okay. structure. So, yeah, I, now the problem is that, uh, you know, I, I put the basis of, of my theory and uh, the problem is that uh, the geometry in uh, uh, non-Archimedean spaces uh, has not been uh, studied and developed. Uh, I, I will tell you a, a little story after that. And so the problem is that what looks to us today as non-symmetric, dissymmetric, maybe is symmetric, but we, we are not aware of it. Because when you have the benzene molecule, you need to consider uh, all the environment which is made of uh, infinitesimal particles. And maybe what we see at, the, at our scale, which looks like dissymmetric, is not. And once again, there is a, a relationship with order, uh, which I said, uh, disorder uh, means, uh, means uh, uh, symmetric. Okay. And so you, look at, uh, you, you need to look at the whole picture. And it's very, very um, complicated and complex to, to see that if we, have, we see the whole picture or not. So uh, I'm sorry, I, I cannot really answer. Now, the, the little story, which is quite uh, funny, I guess, and uh, not, not necessarily funny, but strange. Uh, when I was in Airbus, I had some budget at that time. And uh, having uh, uh, carried out what, what I said tonight, I, 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 I went to see my friend, uh, Cédric Villani, who was awarded the Fields Medal in 2010. At that time, he, he was the head of the Institut Henri Poincaré in Paris, a very good institute of math and physics. And I told him, uh, could you please find me the two of the, your best students uh, in math for a, a PhD for three years each? I can pay both of them and to start from scratch studying geometry in a non archimedean space. And do you know what he answered me? He told me, wow, surely not. Because, you know, our mathematician needs to have a career. This is a too complicated problem, and uh, I will not give you them. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, it's a real, uh, it's really, really, really complicated. So I decided to do this by my own, but uh, I didn't have time enough, frankly speaking. And uh, since that time, I think it was about 2015, something like this. And... Uh, I could realize that this is a much uh, more complicated problem than I thought, frankly speaking. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. Ron, I, oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the clock. Um, so Ron, thank you again. Let me go to Paul Murad. Sir, I, I believe you had a question. Yeah, I had a minor question uh, about your view graphs. One of them that I saw, I thought it was number nine. Can you go back to that? Uh, slide nine? Yeah, view graph number nine. Uh, and okay. you may have to share your screen again, sir. Yes, yes I'm sharing my screen. All right. This one. Not yet, nothing. There we go. Okay. Thank you. um, you're showing the field equation in the bottom. All right. And then you Sorry. also say, hey, due to the Hertz experiments, I end up with the following. In other words, what's on the right hand side disappears. Um, the reason I, I, my question is, why does it disappear? This is not the conservation of charge equation. So I don't understand why it would disappear unless you're using an argument that you're just looking at, at uh, a field and a wave in space. Yes, so, uh, uh, you know, the, if you, uh, I hope I, I will answer your question. I'm not sure because I'm not sure I understood everything you told me, but when starting from these four equations, yeah. you make them up, you get the, the yellow one. The yellow one for me is it maybe is a true one. So it means it works. But the problem is that if you want to go to the wave equation, you need to cancel the right member of this equation. 
the only way you can do it mathematically is to cancel the charge. If there is a charge, you will you will you will keep the the, the gradient of of of, of the, the density of charge. Okay, to get the blue equation, you need to cancel the right member. And so it means, and the problem of the right member is that this is the cause of the phenomenon which is there, the charge and the currents. Okay, so you're not really looking at the conservation of charge there. No, no. And eliminating no, no. That. You know, the, the point is when, when you look at the, at the picture on the right, uh, the, Z, the Z region, so in which there are charges and currents, and then you have the point P and you have vacuum around the point P. And what Maxwell says is that, ah, oh, there is no charge and no current, so and he gets the wave equation. The problem is that the problem is that initially the charge was in the Z region. It, it, you, 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 you cannot, you should not be uh, authorized to, uh, you shouldn't be allowed to, to, to cancel it. Okay, but the JDT still can exist. No, the J is uh, the, the derivative of the, the, the current is, is linked to the charges. If you, if you cancel the charges, you, you, you have no current, of course. All right, so you're saying it disappears when it's out of the source? Yes. Okay. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you again. Okay, so let me see. I, I'm just going through the chats here. And um, does anyone else, would you guys want to raise your hand? Does anyone else have questions in chat? We do have a few more minutes. We've got about 10 minutes left. Ah, okay. Yanis Brand. Okay. Uh, Yanis, sir. Yeah. Hi. Hi, all. Hello. Yeah. And it, can you, uh, can you start your yes, video, of sir? Thank Hi. you. So, um, you guys know a lot more than me about physics. I figured out. I love to listen to everyone, so thank you a lot. Um, my question, um, Jean-Francois, uh, you were saying that you made these buildings in your mind, so you have the theory you can navigate maybe visually or like you put this together. Um, I have um, personally experienced some parallel consciousness. Um, I, I will not get too much into it, but uh, I was wondering that if we have these different theories, relativity, Einstein, quantum mechanics, um, what if they are both true at the same time, at the same space, but just in different frequencies? So not just in different size spectrums, like quantum, very small maybe, um, but both theories being correct at the same time and space, but depending on the maybe perception or consciousness of something um, th there is uh, different objects resonate in different theory fields so maybe theories are working at the same time and i was wondering if you explored the possibility um, of the coherence of your models being um, more coherent if they can exist at the same time and there would no not be a contradiction so like cancel out the contradiction assumedly and then return to it maybe thank you uh, so uh, i'm not going I'm, I'm i i i hope i will not disappoint you too much uh, uh, you know the uh, what i didn't say about my theory uh, is that i'm much more pragmatic that uh, it, it may be uh, uh, thought uh, a priori in fact i believe that there is there is there is not even a fourth dimension in space. I think that there is a, there are only three dimensions, and that time is not a dimension. Time is something which passes. We need we need matter to measure time, and uh, you know this is the evolution of the system, uh, uh, entropic in evolution of our system, and so time is an impression. Uh, maybe to make a parallel in mathematics today, uh, you know uh, uh, randomness is something, uh, an impression is not uh, uh, what we could call true randomness, doesn't really exist. Uh, so now uh, what I, I didn't say also, and which is uh, in relation with what you said, is I don't believe in the, uh, if, if I speak the language of uh, 
classical physics in the isolated system. Nothing is isolated, everything is linked. Uh, you know, so isolate, isolation is some uh, only theoretical view, simplification view, but never exists. Uh, so, uh, and we can have the impression that, for example, relativity would work in some cases, and that quantum physics would, wor would work in other cases, depending on the conditions. Uh, but uh, I would doubt that, uh, uh, you know, as I said before, uh, I, I, maybe I can tell you <laughs> when, uh, when also one little story, uh, they, they are not uh, consistent and compatible. I wrote many years ago now, uh, I think about, about 10 years ago, a, a paper and the, the title of the paper was Physics 9-11. Uh, and uh, uh, I sent it to Physics Letter A, the, the famous uh, uh, journal. And, uh, you know, in, in this paper, I compared the quantum physics and uh, uh, relativity to the two towers uh, in, New York, in New York. And I said that they, they collapse because they are not uh, compatible together on a, a pure attack on uh, formal logic. Logically speaking, they, they are not uh, compatible, okay? So either you abandon one of them or both of them, but you cannot, you cannot keep both of them. It's not possible. And this paper was refused, not even go to a, review, a reviewer, okay? Uh, I, I, I had the negative answer from the boss of the, of the physics letter A uh, within four hours or something like this. Your paper is not suited for publication in physics literary. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but I, so I, I didn't publish this. But I, I you know, as a mathematician, uh, maybe I made a mistake. It's always possible, but I don't think I did. But it seems to be non-politically correct to publish such kind of things today. I Thank you. Um, Jean-Francois, and again, we're, we have about seven minutes left. I, I want to thank you again for answering all these questions. Uh, David Alzafon, uh, I have one from him, and then I have one from Eric Hermanson. But let me go to David first. Sir? Uh, you, you, oh, there we go. Yeah, sorry. Um, well, Jean-Francois, you, you mentioned the possibility of uh, faster than light communications. And it seems to me that um, if there are other civilizations in the galaxy, and I would think there must be, uh, that they wouldn't limit themselves to a, a communication at the speed of light. And so I was wondering if there was some way using your model that you could um, intercept uh, already existing faster than light communication, some simple way, some kind of you know antenna to pick it up. Uh, unfortunately, not with the, the scheme I propose. In the scheme I propose, the communication channel is at infinitesimal level, and so out of reach to, of us. The idea is we are at the real scale. We can manipulate uh, entangled particles, but the entanglement, as I said before, answering one question is it, the entanglement link is at infinite, infinitesimal level. So. To, to detect this, we should be able to, to be a, able to observe what happens at the infinitesimal level. And uh, we are far away from this, maybe one day, uh, but uh, not sure. <laughs> uh, Tim, I can't hear you. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, David, yeah, I muted you on accident. I'm sorry. K did you have more, sir? Uh, no, um, that, that answers my question. Okay. Thanks a lot. Th thank you very much. Okay. And then uh, Eric Hermanson, sir, did, did you have a question? I did. No, I, I just uh, wanted to bring up uh, a discussion that I had with Giuseppe Bellotti, who's it's a really brilliant guy. He's uh, uh, he lives in Italy and he's written several peer reviewed papers that aren't, you know, well recognized. And uh, he has a lot of really deep thoughts on uh, zero, you know, the concept of zero and infinity and that, um, 
they're actually they're bounded or infinity would be bounded and, and, and zero doesn't exist. And so he's got, you know, if you, if you look at his papers, um, just do a search for them. A lot of them go into these concepts and uh, we were, you know, discussing the, the Dirac Delta function. And uh, I mean, he, he came up with the idea that it might be possible to integrate the function uh, over infinity and come up with value of two rather than, uh, you know, what it would normally produce uh, a value of one uh, as an impulse. And uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be easy to explain that in a few minutes, but uh, we, we should maybe have Giuseppe come on and talk about uh, some of his yeah. ideas on that. I don't know how they would relate to propulsion, but, uh, you know, Jean-Francois was discussing, uh, you know, his view on infinities and I missed uh, half his presentation, so I apologize. But uh, so that came to mind, <clears throat> and I wanted to mention that. Ah, uh, okay. Well, thank you, Eric. Uh, Jean Francois, can can you comment on on uh, the discussion of infinity? I guess in your model. Yes. Yeah, so uh, uh, you know the, I think that there are two basic things in uh, in physics, and uh, which are finite and infinite, and there is a, a transition, and which is not smooth between these. And there is order and disorder. And when you mix this up, this is a way to get exactly the same results as the one I showed you today. I, I took the traditional approach. I, I, the, the first one I, I, I discovered, in fact, uh, through the thermodynamics. But there is a, I, I have written some other papers uh, starting from finite and infinite and order and disorder. And we get exactly to the same result uh, and getting to non-Archimedean. Maybe one thing I, I should say, if you are in a non-Archimedean space, derivation and integration is no more possible. So you need to find other ways to do math. And this is why it's pretty difficult to, to, to achieve and uh, uh, to get some results from, from this. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Um, so I have I have one more question because we are almost out of time. Uh, Jeremy Reese, I believe, sir. Do do we have anything from the YouTube channel? Um, nothing right now. It looks like all all the people that um usually have been joining in uh, are all here and <laughs> live. This is quite a turnout for uh, this APEC conference, and we but we do have one hundred and ten people. Uh, pretty much watching live right now on YouTube. So I haven't, uh, anyone, I, I asked them to put questions in all caps, but I haven't seen any so far. So, and I, and I don't have any, I'm, I'm busy trying to add pieces to my uh, presentation, which is coming up shortly. So, okay. Um, well, let me, let me put you back on mute then. So, um, okay. Well, so I think, I think that is it for right now. Uh, so, oops, sorry, I'm having mouse problems. Jean-Francois, thank you very, very much. Very much. And there we go. Okay, Zoom is, yeah, it, there's a lag for some reason. But um, yes, again, thank you very, very much. Uh, again, let me put it back on gallery view. And everyone, please give a big applause. Tremendous presentation. Thank you again.